hey you guys it's me Keisha B I'm back with another video and as you can tell by the title and the picture on the screen I'm making guacamole I'm making salsa two of the probably simplest dishes you'll ever make aside from pouring some water um, <laughs> guacamole and chips and salsa are pretty much appropriate for any occasion you could take it to a potluck you could take it to a party you could stack on it throughout the day so I mean, come on, who doesn't like guacamole and salsa? So let's just go ahead and make some guacamole and salsa. So right here, I'm just chopping up my purple onions. I usually call these red onions, but red onion, purple onion, whatever. You can actually use white onions if you like. I wouldn't suggest that you use like Vidalia or yellow onions. They're kind of on the sweeter side. Right here, I'm gonna chop up some cilantro, very essential in your guacamole. If you want to get a fine mince on your cilantro, just roll it up real tight and that way you're not chewing into large leaves of cilantro. I mean, if you like that, that's fine. Babe. That's fine. Babe. Now you're going to add some tomatoes, which is completely optional. A lot of people don't really add tomatoes to their guacamole, but I do because my baby loves them. Right here, I'm just showing you how easily my chef knife is gliding through the tomatoes. I want to call attention to that because two of the most dangerous things that you can have in your kitchen as a chef, culinarian, cook, whatever you want to call yourself, is a dull knife and germs. So when you're using chef knives or any type of knives, make sure that they are sharp because dull cuts are not safe. Right here, I'm just rolling up a lime just to kind of get the juices going in it. I pick my limes according to how thin the skin is because the thinner the skin, the more juice you're going to have. I'm also going to add, optional for you, a serrano chili. I, of course, love my dishes. Pretty spicy. And I've also heard that you can actually gauge the heat in a serrano chili pepper according to how curvy the stem is. I don't know how true that is, but, you know, like I said, I like my dishes pretty spicy. I just went ahead and put a glove on because I know that I'll go throughout the day and forget that I was using my bare hands to cut chilies and I'll mess around and rub my eye and I don't know if you've ever experienced that type of discomfort but it is not safe at all. So now we have the star of the show, the avocado. And I'll tell you something, I don't buy avocados right for the simple fact that you really can't determine what type of avocado you're getting. So what I usually do is buy, excuse me, unripe avocados. I grab a paper bag. In the paper bag, I put a banana and the unripe avocado. And I store it in a dark place for about two to three days. And this is what I end up with after those two to three days. A very ripe, bright yellow, velvety, good, just the consistency, not bruised avocado. You want to make sure that your avocados aren't watery. I don't know if you've ever like bought an avocado and you cut into it and it just tastes like water is oh that's horrible so once i had that experience and found out how to ripe my own avocados that's what i started doing and i've been doing it ever since and i never run into an avocado that i don't like isn't that pretty isn't that bright green just so what you're going to do is just take the seed out please be careful for those of you at home that are not experiencing or experiencing deep seeding So you can just take your thumb and run it around the skin and it should pop right out for you. That's if your avocado is nice and ripe the way it's supposed to be. Or you have the option of cutting the avocado inside of the skin, just making like small cubes. And then you just take a spoon and dump that right into your bowl. Now another option with these ingredients you have is avocado salad. You don't have to mash it up. You can just basically leave your avocados um, in small dices and add your ingredients. You do a rough chop on everything, add a little kosher salt, and then you start to add your other ingredients like your onions, your cilantro, your tomatoes. You can add a little bit of lemon or lime juice, and you can also add a little bit of olive oil. And you can put this on top of like um, a piece of like uh, bruschetta bread or you could just eat it by itself you wouldn't mash it up once you start to mash it up that's when it becomes guacamole 
so I just added a little bit of pepper to it. And of course, quality control is necessary. Now, one thing I absolutely hate is when I go to Chipotle and you get your guacamole and there's like a big unedible avocado in your guacamole that, uh-uh, what is that? So mash up your guacamole. Make sure the consistency is throughout. Nobody wants to bite into a big chunk of avocado. Purposeless avocado. Now let me cut to something that's very near and dear to my heart as a culinary. While cooking, disinfecting your workspace and keeping it tidy and clean is very important. I've been in some kitchens where I wouldn't even eat what they were serving if it was triple wrapped and saran wrap with a lock on it. So again, keeping your workspace very clean is important. Making sure that you use something that's heavy duty, that smells good, and it's going to kill all of the germs. So now we're on to the salsa. This recipe was gifted to me by my friend Angie. Hey girl! She gave this to me years ago. She said this is going to be one of the easiest, simplest sauces you'll ever make. Um, on the recipe she actually added mango. I'm not really a fan of that but I did twerk a couple of things. So of course you're going to need these ingredients shown. I just used some of the purple onion and tomato that I had left from the guacamole. Dumped that right in the blender. You're going to add some chopped garlic, that's about two and a half cloves. You're going to add some cilantro, about maybe like a half a bunch. That is Mexican stewed tomatoes, very important, Mexican stewed, stewed tomatoes and the casaderas, I believe that's how you pronounce it. I'll put all of the ingredients in the description box and some lime juice and you just blend that right up. Easy as pie or easy as guacamole. Add a little salt. And that's the consistency you should have. Now, if you like your salsa chunkier, you can opt to add um, tomatoes to it. But this is the consistency of that particular recipe. So you just go ahead and add it in a bowl. And everything is pretty much done. We're going to grab that guacamole. Now, this is how I like to serve my guacamole. If there's, I'm having a couple of people over, you know, like two or three, I'll just do avocado boats is what I call them. I'll take the um, shell that the avocado was in, I'll set it to the side, and put the guacamole in it. That way, everybody has their own serving of guacamole, as opposed to sticking their chips in the bowl or, you know, double dipping. The whole double dipping thing is so not safe. I mean, you know, going back in the bowl with your wet chip that's already got your tongue seasoning on it, it's not safe for everybody else. That's why you should opt for the guacamole bowl. I mean, unless, you know, you're around people that you trust like that, which could be like your family or your kids or something. But, you know, it's always an option. It's not necessary. It's not required. I just thought that it was, you know, very unique and pretty and, you know, nice. Now this is your second option if you don't want to go, you know, with the whole avocado boat thing. Just put the salsa in a bowl, put the chips on a plate, put the guacamole in a bowl too, and let everybody just dip at their leisure and enjoy, right? Simple. So hopefully everybody enjoyed this video. I mean, like I said, guacamole, you can't go wrong with that. Salsa, you can't go wrong with that either. Thank you so much for coming back. Please stay tuned for more videos. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them in the comment section below. And if you're not already subscribed, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.